Hallelujah. You reign forever, Father. You reign forever, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Why don't we just begin to worship the Lord right now? The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and turn to his courts with praise. Why don't we just begin to do that to our God right now? In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, I believe it is the will of God that when we enter into the house of God, that we don't enter with sadness, but we enter in with his presence with joy. That we come ready to thank him. That we come ready to praise him. Why don't we just get into that spirit of joy right now. The Bible says it's the oil of joy for mourning. It's the garment of praise. Let's just put that on right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you today. Lord, that you would be praised, O oh Lord, today. We, Lord, lift you up with our voice. We magnify you with the voice, O oh Lord. We praise your name with the voice. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor today. For, Lord, it is all yours. All of the kingdom, O oh God. All of the power, Lord. All of the glory in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Come on, why don't you just begin to give it to him today. Give him all the praise. Give him all the honor. Give him all the thanks. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come on, if you have a praise in your spirit, if you have a praise in your heart, if God's been good to you, just begin to magnify him. If God's been good to you, just begin to praise him. He is worthy of all the worship. He is worthy of all the adoration. Lord, that can see and la masaya. Lord, that can see and maha. God, I pray that we don't need a miracle in order for us to worship you but that we, we can worship in any circumstance that we can worship in a storm that we can even worship when things don't seem to go the way we planned out but God that we know that you are always good that you are always Lord that you are always sitting on the throne we thank you for what you're going to do today we thank you for what you're going to release for what you're going to speak to us through the preaching of the word Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for all that you've done. For all that you've done. For all that you've done. For all that you've done in this church. For all that you've done in our lives. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. God, whatever you do today, receive all the glory. Whatever takes place in this service, let you receive all the glory. Let you receive all the credit. Let you receive all the honor, O oh Lord, today. For thine is the kingdom of God. 
Hakala Bordoko Satana Bahaya. He Kordobo Satala Bordoko say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hayarabo Korobo Sandaye Rabba Sata. Hale Bordoko say. Come on, our praise is not determined on how we're feeling. Our praise is determined on how good our God is. Our praise is determined on what he's done, on who he is. And he's done mighty things. He's done miraculous things. He's been a good God. Lord let my life Lord worship you not just right now in this moment but Lord let everything that I do be in the name of Jesus God I pray that in the name of Jesus that Lord not just my lips would worship you that it would not be far away from you but Lord my heart would draw near to you as well God let my whole life worship you let my whole life worship you Jesus if you love the Lord why don't you just begin to worship him right now why don't you just begin to talk to him and say how much he means to you how much you love him Come on, in the name of Jesus, why don't you just begin to talk to him? Why don't you just begin to talk to him? I know I know that there's some phrases that we can sometimes memorize when we're praying, but right now, let it be from the heart. Why don't you just begin to really express to him that, God, I sincerely know that I would not be here today if it was not for your grace, if it was not for you pulling me out of the mire clay oh God I'm here because of you Jesus and I'm not going to forget that hallelujah Come on, in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just begin to talk to him right now? Let it be from the heart. Let it be from the inner man. God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. I wonder if we could just clap our hands to him right now. If we could just worship him and thank him. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of all the glory. Lord, you are worthy of all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, O Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, you're going to do amazing things today. You're going to do amazing things today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. A couple of days ago, I, I just was watching something on the Internet, and then there was this video that popped up of a preaching, and I don't know what it was, something just told me just to click on it, just to go on it, and I said, okay, I didn't really, I've heard this person preach before many times, and so I said, okay, but I just felt like God said, just click on that preaching video and just watch it, and I'm just in the beginning of the video, and the preacher, all that he says is, if Jesus walked in through those two doors right now, what would your praise look like? If Jesus walked in through those doors, I, I, I don't know, but may, maybe the coffee hasn't fully kicked in yet. But I, I ask you, if Jesus walked in through those doors right now, what would your worship look like? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna need some help. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I would not be 
be able to contain myself. Come on, we're, we're, we're so programmed sometimes that God has to do something in order for us to shout. That God has to do something for, for, for us to glorify him. But what if it's just his presence that he just is in this place? Come on, because Jesus has walked through those two doors. The truth is he may not be here in the flesh, but he's here in the spirit. So if Jesus walked into this house, what would your praise look like? Come on, why don't you just begin to glorify him? I don't know how you would act, but if the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords step foot, my soul crieth out. My soul crieth out. Hakalaborokosiadarabashata. In the name of Jesus. Come on, this is the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, let's just continue to worship Him. This is not emotional. This is not hype. Come on. Robo Satayele. He's been too good for me just to sit down. He's been too good for me just to do nothing. God's been too good to me. Hallelujah. Why don't you just begin to lift up your voice to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, the, the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. He is in this room right now. If you have the Holy Ghost, why don't you just begin to talk with other tongues right now and glorify the Lord with your mouth. There is something in this place. There is something in this atmosphere. And can I tell you, it's not emotions. It's not just emotions, but it's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that we worship. It's the spirit of God that we adore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he's been good to you. I know we did it already, but if we're going to be worshiping forever in heaven, we might as well get some practice. And so without any mic volume, without anything to try to hype you up, I'm going to put this microphone down, and when it's down, I want you just to begin to worship God. There may be some things going on in your personal life that may seem out of your control, but I believe as you worship God, as you begin to thank Him, those things that you are worrying about will reach the hands of God, and He will begin to deal with them if you let it. So in the name of Jesus, I'm going to put this microphone down. But let's just begin to worship the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Let the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Let the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. Let the redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. To be salt and light, to be salt and light in the world, in the world. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift up our hands and worship him? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm hungry for you, Jesus. Like a fire. Shut up in my bones. I want the world to know you're my God. With a passion burning deep within, I want the world to know that you live. Jesus, I'm there. I'm hungry. 
your spirit come and move within fill me once again cause I need more Jesus I'm desperate for you Jesus I'm hungry for you Jesus I'm
lift up your hands to him. Would you begin to worship the Lord in this place? Can you sense the rain? Can you sense the rain? Can you sense the river inside of you flowing? Can you sense it in, in you? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. He katorondo lo bokotori anda la basata. Yes, anda la bokotoye. Why don't you talk to him right now for a little bit? Why don't you begin to talk to the Lord right now in Jesus' name? The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. If you feel dry in your spirit, the presence of the Lord can renew you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, do you feel it? Do you feel the love of Jesus? Do you feel the love of Jesus? Hallelujah. to pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you begin to minister in the name of Jesus? Lord, in your name, Father. In your name, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Would you minister? Would you minister? Would you let the presence of God lead you, guide you? Come on, it's prayer time in the house of God. Prayer is the source of your refreshing your authority. Prayer is the source where God flows. He's called, his house is called the house of prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. God, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain in my heart. Let it rain in my soul. Lord, renew me like a dry ground that needs the rain. Like a dry ground that's cracked and baked in the heat of the day. Let the rain of the Spirit of God, let the rain of the presence of God, in the name of Jesus, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. The Bible promises it to be a river deep within you. The Bible promises the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's like a river flowing from the inner man, refreshing, giving you hope, giving you peace, giving you joy. In the name of Jesus. Would you begin to talk in tongues right now if you got the presence of God living inside of you? Would you begin to speak that heavenly language in Jesus' name? Come on, would you begin to let your spirit be refreshed in Jesus' name? Do you feel the winds? Do you feel the rain? 
Oh, has the floodgates, has the river flowed? Don't stop until the river flows within you and you feel that change. You feel that flow. Ikaya nama katala mahaya nama shata. Iandorobo kotori andalekete shete. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody lift up your voice to him. Somebody lift up some praise. Somebody release some gratitude, some adoration, some worship to the name that is above every name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, that's right. It's beginning to flow right now. Somebody begin to tap into that flow where you begin to be renewed, refreshed, where your mind gets clearer and you get a taste of heaven. A taste of the hope that you have. The love of God. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Would you give him a praise, a shout, some thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many sense the presence of the Lord in this place? Can you sense the presence of God in this house? There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. How I many you can agree to that? I never want to get used to the presence of God. I never want to take it for granted that I could sense it. Anytime there's a manifestation of this invisible God that we serve, it demands a response. At the very least, it demands an articulation of your mouth because you're the only creature, you're the only creation that could articulate what you feel. Why don't you speak right now what's in your heart? Why don't you articulate it, speak it in words, and just begin to offer that to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, God, this is what I have, my worship. This is what I have, my will. I surrender it to you with praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise is usually dependent on what's happening or what has happened, an answered prayer, a healing. That's praise. Praise Him for His mighty acts, the Bible says. But worship is deeper. Worship is, I don't have to have anything good happen in my life. I don't have to have answered prayers. I've come to worship. I've come to bow down. I've come to make obeisance to God. I've come to prostrate myself, making myself vulnerable, trusting Him. Whatever He does or does not do, I'll worship. In the name of Jesus. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, he said, the time will come, and it is now, that the true worshipers of God, not praise makers, the true worshipers of God shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship him in spirit and in truth. The oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job, God being the instigator, to Satan, the adversary of your soul. He is no match for God. He is not the antithesis of God. He is not the opposite of God. There's no opposite of God. He reigns alone and supreme. He said, beside me there is no God. But the oldest book, Job, the Lord has so much confidence in this man called Job who lived a righteous life. In fact, Jesus said 
He said, there's no man like him in all the East. He is upright. He hates evil. And then there's a conversation that Job was not aware of. The adversary said, well, he's worshiping you because you blessed him with so much. He has a cattle, cattle. He has kids. He has a wife. He's got everything that a man in this life could want. But he said, take away all he has and he won't worship you. And the Lord says, all right, go ahead. There'll be worship coming up in a few minutes. <laughs> when the adversary took everything he had, the, the Lord, uh, through the recording of his word, <laughs> begins to record. As Job spoke in his heart, true worship, articulated with words that only man can do, no animal can speak. He said, naked came I into the, from my mother's womb, and naked will I return. In other words, when I die. He said, the Lord has given, he acknowledged the source of his blessing. But the Lord has taken away, he acknowledged he can do whatever he wants. Trusting him. And he worshiped, he said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I wonder if there's anybody here that could bless the name that's already been revealed to you. I wonder if there's anybody here that can lift up the name of Jesus. Job didn't even have the name. Job didn't have the revelation of the name. But yet he worshiped in the most trying times of life. Listen to me. In the most trying times of life. It's the sweetest to worship. Oh, you didn't get it. I said, when life is tough, it's the deepest worship that you can step into. When things are not going as planned, and yet you come to the house of God, and yet you lift up your hands and yet you run, you jump, you shout that's the deepest, most pure the most sincere worship somebody begin to worship him somebody begin to give him thanks in fact I'm convinced that during good times God allows that for us to practice worship. So then when it really counts, you have built enough deposit of worship and praise that you could withdraw from it. And the grace, the empowerment of God begins to flow through you. Job did not do that out of his humanity. Job did not do that because he felt good. Uh, no, the presence of God, his experience with God, his trust with God uh, allowed him to be the default setting of his soul. How are you going to worship him in good times and bad times? Any worshipers in the house of the Lord? Have you made up your mind to worship him? In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Some of the deepest times I've had with God was my alone time when I used to live in L.A. in a, an apartment by myself with two speakers as tall as I am. I'm just sitting in front of it and worshiping, worshiping, praising, formative years that God in His mercy and His grace allows that sets us up for the long haul. How I many you made up your mind? I'm not turning back. There's no better offer. I'm not waiting for anything. I'm not waiting for anything else to come around. This is it. The Lord has revealed His Word. It is tried. It is true. It is tested. I'm going to worship Him here. 
I'm going to die here. I'm going to get raptured here. I'm going to win souls here because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good to have all of you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Especially good to have uh, Sydney Reese. Got to meet her before service. And her two beautiful daughters. We thank God for her. Amen. And all of you fine folks. Why do you turn around and shake somebody's hand and welcome them in Jesus' name? Amen. God is good. And our dear ushers, if you can have the um, October calendar ready, if any of you don't have the calendar yet. And um, time is going fast, and it's October's around the corner. Amen. And we want to... Uh, Enjoy, amen. Enjoy every time we have to gather together, amen. In Jesus' name. And um, good to have you, Brother Daniel. Prayed for you, amen. In Jesus' name, good to have you, amen. And also, um, Brother Paul and, and Sister Keisha are back from the Philippines, amen. <laughs> and. Uh, in Jesus' name, God is doing great things. You may be seated. All right. If you don't have a calendar, please raise your hand. And um, our deacon, Brother Jimmy, is going to give you a calendar. In Jesus' name. All right. It's also available on the website. And I do want to um, talk about what's going on in October. But, um, yeah, I'll talk about what's going on in October. We will have our... Wednesday services, amen. You know that we have Bible teaching and also prayer services. If you look in the calendar, you'll know which one is what. But you don't want to miss anything, amen. <laughs> we learn to pray, amen. And we learn the word of God. We need it both in Jesus' name, amen. All right, and we also have our connect group meetings gathering in the house. And I like um, how we're studying the book of Acts, they call it house churches, amen, and um, we always have a great time, we have October 6th, that will be next week, correct, that will be um, with Brother Paul, amen, and invite you to join that as well, in Jesus' name, and you see the following um, lineup of Connect Group meetings, and keep that in prayer, amen, because God does amazing things, when we gather together, when two or three are gathered, amen, his spirit touches us and the word renews our mind because that's our goal every day to grow in his grace, the knowledge of him in Jesus' name. And then I also want to remind you that we have what we call as a PAS um, training, training sessions with our bishop, Bishop, and he will also be with Brother Shelton who is... Um, God's blessed us to know him, to be a part of our lives. He's a modern-day prophet, Brother Shelton. So you don't want to miss this. And deacons, pastor wants you to be here to find at least a day, if not, you know, an evening to be with us because we don't get to have him every time. We don't get to have them every time. So um, that's in Escondido. You have the address as well on the church calendar, okay, for that. It's free. It's free, okay. Our family is getting a hotel, okay. Um, so make plans to be there. Pastor wants you, especially deacons, to hear, amen, to hear what the bishop's going to say because you deacons are an extension of the pastors, amen. And so you need to know. You need to be here in Jesus' name. And everybody else who would like to hear the revelation that the bishop wants to share with us, you're welcome as well. Any questions, please let us know in Jesus' name. So that is coming up. It's also in your calendar. And um, we that's um, anything else that I missed, just look in your calendar. We're continuing Mondays. If you're able to come starting from 7 o'clock. We will, we will pray at church, amen. It's not a church prayer meeting, but the church is open to encourage you to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Because prayer is important, amen. We need prayer every day, in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you, if you're able to come 
on Mondays, and that is tomorrow. Amen. At 7 in Jesus' name. And um, later today, we have our Buena Park Church. We will have service at the Buena Park um, Junior High School. And we're going to have a great time in the Holy Ghost uh, with Pastor David and his church. And so um, that's 3.30. 3.30, okay? So um, after service, enjoy the hospitality and then um, get ready um, to please join us. And we appreciate you because God is doing great things. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Paul, come up and take the offering. Praise the Lord, church. In Jesus' name. How many like to give? God has commanded us to give. You know, one thing that, uh, one thing that uh, tithing, stu studying and, you know, ministering about tithes has taught me is that God has taught me he has taken off one of the biggest stress that we go through in North America here. And that is love for our money. Now, I know we need to live and we need to exist and feed our family and all that. But, you know, God knows exactly what you need, Right. So we never have to worry about this thing, about needing anything, right? As long as you stay faithful and you, as long as you are in line with His perfect will, you know, just doing, being obedient to His commandments, He will, he will take care of you, right? He already has, and you know, I could, I could have many testimony from all of you of what He has done for you. We all have testimonies about it, you know? And one of the things that God has taken away, the biggest stress of my life in North America is money. And he is taking my love for money away from me. Now, I just want to let you know what kind of freedom that is. That is a blessings. I mean, blessings is not two Lexus in your garage, folks. Blessings is the joy that God gives you, the peace. For he is a comforter. He comforts you in many other ways than just, you know, blessing you with the material things. Yes, he does that. But he gave me the biggest blessing of my life, and that is, that is breaking the tie for the love for money. I am free to give. I am free to not have any money and be happy. I haven't worried about money in so long, although I go through my ups and downs of my budget. So I just want to let you know, church, that God's got some blessings that you haven't even thought about yet. And let's go beyond thinking material stuff. Let's go beyond thinking our laundry list that we give him every day. Okay? Because it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about your joy and the freedom that he gives you in Jesus' name. So I'm telling you, you know, as you give more and more, God will bless you more and more. And I'm talking about in whole realm of blessings. So as we prepare our hearts to give, can we all stand? Let me pray for you this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for that revelation, Lord God, that understanding, Lord God, that you are what we're looking for, not money, not material stuff or anything like that, Lord God. Lord, let that sink into our heart, Lord God. Lord, let it be all about you, Lord God, not about us, Lord God. As we give, Lord God, as we bring up, Lord God, our tithes and offering, Lord God. Lord, I know, Lord God, I know the blessings is coming our way. Whatever our needs are, whatever our needs may be, Lord God, I know it's going to be covered by you, Lord God. Lord, I have faith in you, Lord. I have trust in you, Lord God, for you are my provider, Lord God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, as you bring up your tithe and offering, let's just love on each other. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And for you electronic givers, there's Brother Jim over here to service you as well. In Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. As you're continuing to give, just want to give a brief testimony and reiterate what Sister Lachika has been saying. Uh, we've been having some powerful moves of God in our last Sunday of the month services at 3.30. Um, having one later on today at 3.30, and I thank each and every one of you that has been able to make it. Coming together as the body of Christ, it, it's truly a blessing to be, go into a city and just speak the name and watch things happen. And I believe through the prayers and through the services that we've been ha having, we've been taking dominion and authority in every Bible study that we've been having. There has been some opposition on what the Bible says or how it's said and various personal in interpretations of the Bible, but there is such a strong foundation now that doesn't get rocked by every wind of doctrine. There is a strong foundation that has been driven by prayer where we don't feel discouraged anymore. Um, we, we've been having some powerful testimonies that's been going on where people come to the point of, man, I, I really do need to come to repentance. I really do need a God. I really can't do it on my own. And it, it may seem like baby steps, but that is huge. That is huge. Knowing the necessity of God is huge. So we've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been doing Bible study after Bible study, and just seeing their eyes open and revelations settle in in their spirit, it's amazing. So I thank each and every one of you who have been praying. It, it doesn't go up in the air and just vanish. Every prayer that you've been praying with us, we feel that. We feel that every service that we've been having, we feel strength. We may be feeling weary physically, but every prayer that you have been praying, I thank you guys. I thank you for praying for us. And we're waiting. We're waiting for that powerful move of God later this afternoon. So for those of you who can join us, we'd love to have you and just have a powerful service in God. In Jesus' name. Would you stand in Jesus' name? I want to put this into your hand. This is a flyer that we have. If you want one of these, uh, I think we have a overhead there. Uh, this is a ticket style invitation. And we have ordered 500 of these. We've gone through, I think, three or four batches of it now. And we thank God for what He is doing. Amen. And as you feel led, invite somebody. But don't just invite them. Pray for them. Amen. doesn't matter if it's in the supermarket. I mean, you can pray in the supermarket. How about the rest of you? How many can pray in the supermarket? If you can't, start your house. And then just branch off in your car, your driveway, the supermarket. Last Friday, yeah, Friday, I, I believe it was, uh, we, we went to buy some food for the college and career uh, connect group at, uh, in Irvine at the very healthy fast food place called Jolly Bee. How many of you know what Jolly Bee is? It's a, it's a Filipino fast food uh, competing with KFC and, you know, Popeyes and the like. Uh, it's pretty good. And then there's other bakeries inside. And by the way, we're going to have lunch after service here, so I'm preparing you as well. Uh, full lunch is served. And I was buying these empanadas, you know, uh, at, at Red Ribbon. It's a bakery. And I, I, bought, I, I bought the last batch. And there was this lady that came, and she wanted some, but they already packed it for me. And I kind of jokingly just told her, you know what? If you really want it, I could sell you some of mine for a dollar more. And that just kind of struck a conversation. She she laughed, and, and, and we, we talked for a little bit, and then uh, I just started talking about the Lord. 
I'm here not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, you can talk about anything. Right? All the women say amen. Come on now. That's, not, that's actually a compliment because if you look at it biologically, your right and left hemisphere of your brain have more synaptic, uh, what is it, Brother Daniel? Connections. So your brain fires more neurons than a man. And usually speech or language is a, is a good indication of intelligence. And when you, I just kind of, you know, threw some bait Right? Because that's how you witness to people. You want to you don't want to cram down down their throat if they don't want to talk about God, right? You kind of just, you know, hey, you know, God, praise God. I was just she goes, Oh. And we start talking about the Lord and and uh long story longer, we were talking about just, you know, she she told me her life story that you know, just her her her, her just, she's alone in the world. Her, her parents are deceased. Her 32-year-old uh, doctor, younger sister, or older sister, passed away many years ago. She said, and now I'm by myself. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, trying to figure out, should I go back to the Philippines, retire there? But I, I don't really, I can't get used to it anymore. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a dental hygienist and, and all that stuff. And then she volunteered her to age. She said she's 65 years old. She looks like she was 40. And I'm like, praise God. And then my wife came. We talked to her. And could you pray for her? Her name is Grace. And uh, and she said she's going to come. She lives down the street here in Los Alicios by Trabuco. We're very, very close. And if you have somebody that you've been talking to, witnessing to, there's nothing like being used by God to speak to somebody about Jesus Christ. Would you lift up your hands? Would you pray for Grace and perhaps others? that you know of, your friends, your own family, your own brother, your own sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now, Lord, that you would use us. God, give us words to speak. Lord, we pray every Monday, so God, for revival. And you're doing it, oh God. We pray for Brian, oh God, and Jen that came last Sunday. For crew, oh God, and Eva that came last Sunday, oh Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we would reach out, that we would love, and we believe it's going to happen. If you believe that, your prayers, would you thank him? Would you worship him one more time? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. I want to reiterate a past conference, so that's two weeks from now. Would you believe it? The month of September is almost over. And it will be Christmas, and it will be 2024, and God's coming closer and closer. Amen. The Bible says, comfort one another with these words that Jesus is coming back. It's our hope. But if you ever want to know how it was like to sit at the feet of the Apostle Paul, this is your chance to hear deep, revelatory teaching. It's not preaching. We need preaching. But how many of you have an appetite for teaching? Where you study the Word and you expound on it. And God begins to speak to you and God begins to move. Amen. So I want to encourage you, highly, highly encourage you. If you want to take time off from work, it is well worth it. If you want to drive up and down, sleep on your own bed, that's all right too. As my wife mentioned, we're, we're getting a hotel there in the lovely city of Escondido. Amen. And I believe that's all that God wants. Amen. The unseen world. The unseen world. There is an unseen world that is as real as the clothes you're wearing. It's invisible to the eye. For the most part, it is invisible to the five senses. But it is real. It is spiritual. 
the unseen world. Would you, would you pray one more time and just begin to talk to Jesus and that He would speak to you and that He would reveal to you His Word, His will today and that you would be closer to Him today than yesterday. And you would know more about His Word today than yesterday, that you're ever so walking closer and closer until you're taken out of here, you're caught out of here, the catching away of the bride. Would you close your eyes to this world? And would you tune in to the unseen world, the other world, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Come on, somebody, would you begin to lift up your voice? In the name of... Would you mix that with praise in Jesus' name? In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to encourage you to uh, take your vitamins. Amen. In this unseen world, there's also uh, uh, viruses that are floating around. Amen. So we got a few people that are sick. And thank God for Brother Paul, Sister Keisha, back from the Philippine Islands. And certainly glad to see them. And just want to welcome again Sydney. Amen. Good to see her in the house of God. How many of you are conscious when you wake up in the morning? Well, you are conscious because you woke up. But conscious about the unseen world. That the first thing you think about is not the errands or the chores or the responsibilities, even the necessities, but it's more about this world that you will be a part of one day, whether you're ready or not, whether you believe it or not. Everybody, once they die, they're going to go into this unseen world. The parable that a rich man in Lazarus tells us that when you die, when I die, the, right away the judgment. There's no lapses of consciousness. It, it's interesting when we actually have, you know, a surgery. How many of you have been in a surgery when they put you under? And uh, I remember I, they had, um, I know this is kind of gross, but we're alive. And we were, had a colonoscopy, you know. And uh, how many of you enjoy that in Jesus' name? I mean, you don't know what that is because you're still young. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, they, they put me under. They, later on, I found out they gave me fentanyl. And, and I remember, uh, the, 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 you know, they wheeled me in and they had all these gadgets. I could hear all the beeping and all that. And they're talk, walking me through it. And, you know, Mr. Lachika. And then the last thing I, I, I remember is, can you push yourself from this gurney into this, uh, I don't know, bed, I guess, and that's the last thing I remember. And then when I woke up, I'm like, is it done? And it's interesting. I look at the clock, and it's like an hour or so have passed. And I go, wow, I have lost consciousness in this dimension because of some drug. But it's different when we pass from this life. When you pass from this life to the next, there's no loss of consciousness you'll be here one day and when you pass you'll be on the other world the unseen world i know a lot of people go you know i've seen i saw a light you know people that came back from the dead right i, I don't want to discount what what they what they uh, uh experience because i don't know right and neither do you right so i could i could say the same thing when I had, I could write a book and say, hey, when I had a colonoscopy, I, I went to the other world. I saw a light. I could make stuff up, right? So we don't know. I don't know. We see the light. But usually when I hear stories like that, I compare it to the word. You know, if they say, I saw a light, uh, and there was Jesus, and these other two beside him, <laughs> you know what, nah, that, that was fentanyl. Praise God. If it lines up with the word, now I'm, I might, amen, 
begin to see it and believe it. But the Bible says there was one man called John the Revelator. He was banished in the Isle of Patmos. And, and, and he, he said, I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. How many of you had some out-of-body experiences? How many of you are awake today? Your caffeine's kicking in. Amen. You, do you know that out-of-body experiences is for the church? Amen. I know the Eastern mysticism has perverted it. Transcendental meditation, you know, the yogi, and I'm not talking about the bear, but the one that, that contorts himself, puts himself in the box and regulates his heartbeat. That you know, that that's just that's just junk. You know, that's not biblical. I'm talking about a true Real, out-of-this-world experience. In fact, you get a little bit of that when you tap into the Holy Ghost. In fact, when the Spirit of God moves and we just flow into that dimension, it seems like time stops. You look at the clock, you go, wow, we've worshipped for an hour? Now, if you ever go, I don't know if they, they do this still when you went to the Philippines, but when I went and the services I've been to, when they worship over there, an hour, is they're just warming up. An hour of singing. And they don't have pews usually, especially in the mountains. They don't have pews like the comfortable chairs that you have. There's no air conditioning. There's no carpet. It's usually either dirt or concrete. And you have your own swimming pool or more like a puddle of sweat. Because you're like, they're worshiping. I mean, you talk about they're worshiping and, and sweat's dripping. That's why they eat rice three times a day. Right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they're skinny. It never ceases to amaze me. Go, man, you talk about, I mean, you talk about like a pot of rice for almost for one person, you know? And they're like, but why are they skinny? I don't even eat rice anymore. I'm, I'm still struggling in Jesus' name. But this out of body experience, you need this. So you'll know it's real. So you'll know where you're going and that you're not going to be afraid of death. The Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. How many of you want to see Jesus? How many of you are looking forward to, to seeing Jesus one of these days? In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, Paul is talking about this invisible world. And, and, and he prefaces this by Comparing what we go through in this life, the hardships, the trials. And, and, and if you read the verses before, he said, for our momentary light affliction. Whatever you're going through, it's a light affliction. Amen? Someone turn to somebody and says, you're going through a light affliction. You can handle this. It's not that hard. Now, he's able to say that because most of them, except for John the Revelator, was martyred. Usually their heads separated from their body. He was shipwrecked, he said, twice stoned to death with people. In fact, he died and he resurrected. And, and you know, he was beaten. Four, 14, what is this, 40 save one, right? Because in the law, you, you, can't, you could beat somebody up to 40 times. That's actually in the law. And, and, and if you study the, the number 40, it, it, it's used for maturity. So Moses was in the desert 40 years, right? And they also put them into beatings, 40. Aren't you glad I don't believe that in Jesus' name? <laughs> Amen. And, 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 the, and so he said it's, it's a light affliction. It's, it's, it's not that bad. Because if you have that mindset, whatever you're going through, that it's not that bad, then you could go through it. Amen. You, you could handle it. How many believe you're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might? So Paul begins to write, Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man, this is your physical body, the body of this dimension, is perishing. It's decaying. It's getting old. Right? You can't lose weight as quickly as before. Somebody say amen. The, 
you know, 140. Uh, Brother Daniel is, is helping me lose weight. He's, he's, he's a physical therapist. Amen. And, and uh, I said, you know, 140 was when I was in high school. He goes, you could do that, Pastor. I'm like, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Thank you for the vote of confidence, but my God. <laughs> Amen. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Is your inward man being renewed? Are you feeding the inward man or are you feeding the outward man? Your, your peace depends on this. Your, your joy depends on what you're feeding. If you keep feeding your mind, if you keep feeding the appetites of your humanity, the outward man is getting stronger. But if you perish, let it die, you crucify yourself, then you feed the inward man. You renew it every day. You pray, you fast, you witness to people. Then you're renewed. You're new every day. Thank God. Next verse, please. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You're not going to live forever down here. Your trial is not going to last forever. Somebody say amen. amen. The things you go through, it's not going to last forever. It's momentary. It's light compared to eternity. If you live 120 years, and the oldest people in the world are are uh, in Japan, uh, where, where do they live, o Okinawa or Okinawa? And God willing, next year we're going to go there on a mission trip. They, they, they live to, uh, they have a lot of people that live to be 120 years. And they're not like, you know, a vegetable. And I mean, they're active, you know. I, I, I pray to God, Lord, if, 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 I, if I can or if you want to, for me to live long, I just want, I don't, just don't want to live in, in a hospital bed. You know, I mean, hey, if you want to do that, that, that's your prerogative. Amen. But he said, it's light. Because if you live to be 120 years and you're lost, what good would that be? Even if you live to be a king down here and you're lost forever, what good would that be? What can a man give in exchange for his soul, even if he gains the whole world? So everything that you and I go through, and we all have an opportunity to turn our backs from this gospel. Amen? Because God will test us. But he said, every affliction that you go through is working for you and I a far more exceeding eternal, not temporary, eternal weight of glory. Next verse, please. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen, they are eternal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody begin to open your spiritual eyes uh, to this unseen world uh, that you and I are a part of in Jesus' name. Because we're heading there. We're getting closer and closer to it. You know, I, I, I woke up a little early today. I, I actually set my clock so I could sleep for like eight hours, but... I woke up earlier, and I usually do. And, and when I woke up, I felt like the Lord asked me, do you have any regrets? And I'm like, at first, you don't want to answer right away because I'm a smart aleck. <laughs> All the smart Alex say amen. <laughs> but with the Lord, you know, you kind of, you know, I've learned when God asks something, it doesn't mean he doesn't know the answer. Right? It, it, it actually, he's, 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 he's encouraging you to think deeper beyond this world. And, and then he said, do you have any regrets? And then I go, in my mind, I'm conversing with myself. I go, yeah. But then he began to plant this in my spirit, if you've reconciled with the things that you're regretful about, then you really don't have any more regrets, do you? I go, well, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, if you look at your life, you've got some regrets, amen? But if you're fine with it now because you've 
cannot go back to it. You cannot undo it. You cannot travel in time. So what do you do? You accept it. You take responsibility. You don't blame others. You don't blame your wife. You don't blame your wife. All right. You don't blame your husband. You don't blame your husband. <laughs> you don't blame your kids. And there's a good one. You don't blame yourself. Because that self-condemnation there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Everything that you have made uh, that are mistakes, uh, if you confess it to the Lord, if you're baptized in Jesus' name, uh, he said he is just, he is faithful to forgive you of all of your sins uh, and cleanse you of all of your unrighteousness and he considers you righteous and just. Hallelujah. And so I began to look at my life in the past, and I said, yeah, I don't. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have any more regrets. And I could give that to you. You know, sometimes this, this thought comes to my mind, and I know it's the adversary. It, it says this, why don't you travel? You know, you could travel now. You, you, why don't you travel? See, see places. You know, enjoy your life. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I'd like to see some. I've been to places. But then I begin to think, because this voice makes me feel like I'm missing out. And I go, even if I visit all the wonders of the world, it's nothing compared to where I'm going. The Bible says, eye has not seen, neither ear has heard of the things that God has prepared for those uh, that love his appearing. Uh, you may not visit good places here, white sand beach or what have you, but where you're going, this unseen world, uh, it is the best thing you could ever go to. Uh, it is the best vacation in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and you are not missing out on anything when you put God first. So Paul in Philippians 3.13, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Ro uh, did I give that to you, Philippians 3.13? So remember, uh, if you could look it up, Philippians 3.13.14. This is Paul speaking basically of how not to have any regrets. The formula not to have any regrets. How many of you want to have that formula? How many want to know how not to have any regrets at all? This is worth you going to church today. If you go to a psychiatrist, the principles are there. They won't quote scripture. But you pay what? I don't know. Well, how much does a psychiatrist charge now? 185 for 45 minutes. And it's free here. Praise God. So let me read it here. Philippians 3. 14, 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I have not arrived. I, I don't have everything figured out. But one thing I do, why does it say one thing? Because it's the most important thing. It's the most significant thing. The one thing I do, forgetting those things uh, which are behind uh, and reaching Forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the mark, the goal of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now remember, he killed some people. He puts to death some Christians. He was responsible for families being tortured, being put in jail. And that weighed heavily on his mind. Regrets, if you would, uh, but he was not able uh, to think about those anymore because you know what? He said, I'm looking ahead. Uh, I'm pressing. Uh, I'm not dwelling on my mistakes. Uh, I'm not dwelling on the paths in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. The invisible things. Romans 1 verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men 
who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, when you read the Bible, there, it also always talks about the truth that's really referring to the gospel. And, and that you've got to love the truth, buy the truth, and sell it not. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, verse 20, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are excused. I was reading this, and I go, Wow. I said, Lord, you mean to say that because you have all this creation and because everybody lives in this rock called the earth, that when judgment time comes, nobody has an excuse not to believe in God. Nobody has an excuse not to believe in one God. Nobody has an excuse not to understand the Godhead. Who's the head? Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> and he said, and I go, God, they're not believing in droves just because the sun comes up in the morning. They're not believing in droves now because you had the web telescope and you could have all these, these pictures of, of, of galaxies that are beyond ours. But he said, you know what? If people are really hungry, they'll look for me. They'll be hungry for me. They'll, they'll really believe in their quiet time that they're not satisfied without God. They really believe it. You know why a lot of people, they don't like silence? It's because they have to think. You know, when, you, when you're driving on the road or do you always have to have the radio on, some music, some noise? Or can you think? Because silence allows you to really feel what you are on the inside. You know, a lot of people fill their, for, fill their time with, with activity, to, to be busy. Because, you know, they, they think activity equals fun. And so... I can't go a day without just not doing anything. Because you got to think. And you have to reconcile the condition of your soul. Whether it's lacking or not. Amen. But if you're just content with you and God. Because that's really what he's after. Are you content with just him and you alone? Where you could be quiet and doesn't have to be anything happening. You're just feeling after the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you're conversing with Him. And He's talking to you and speaking to you. And that gives you contentment. Or do you have to be busy? Hey, hey, what are you doing? Uh, hey, hey, can we go here? Can, hey, can, can, you know, hey, can we, uh, uh, uh. Right? I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but, but if you're masking your soul because you don't want to confront your condition, it's better to confront it now than later. Psalms 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day, it uttereth speech. Brother, next verse please. Day unto day. Did you know creation speaks? The birds speak, right? How many of you like nature? How many of you love nature? How many of you love God? How many of you love your pet? Which one do you love the most? <laughs> That was a trick question. But verse 1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens. When you look, have you ever looked up the heaven at the heavens lately? 
the firmament, the clouds, the covering, the canopy that shields us from the radiation of the sun so we don't get chemotherapy without our consent. Amen. And then in verse 2, it says, day unto day, it's speaking. It utters speak. Night unto night, it's showing revelation and knowledge. Uh, verse 3, there is no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. Yet people are not coming to God in droves because it's not enough. So now, you're the one responsible to speak to people about God. You and I are the ones that are given this truth uh, to speak to somebody that's hungry, that's thirsty in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you and I are responsible to introduce them to a loving God. Amen? When you serve God, what kind of God do you serve? Are you appeasing an angry God? Or are you, do you serve a loving God? Are you... You know, are you thinking, well, you know, God, I'm, I'm going to make a mistake or my life's not going as well as I want it. And so I must be doing something wrong. So I must, you know, I'm appeasing an angry God. You know, the, the prehistoric ancient people, they, they appease an angry God. The Aztecs, they, they have human sacrifice to appease, you know, the natural disaster. So it doesn't, that, that kind of God, so he doesn't uh, go bad with them storms or what have you and earthquakes and all others, you know, the Nile crocodile God and the volcano God where you drop people in so it won't be angry. And if we're not careful, sometimes uh, we think of God like that, that he's not pleased with me, that he's going to punish me. In fact, Jericho, the first city they conquered, they, they believed uh, in the agricultural God where they will mix blood in the soil. And it was a rich, very fertile soil in Jericho. But we're not appeasing an angry God. He's a loving God. God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. Can you believe it right now? Would you just believe God loves you? It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how your life has been today. You can change today. God can empower you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is different. I said Jesus is different. These other gods require blood to be sacrificed. He offered his own blood. He died for us. He covered us with his own blood that we might become the righteousness of God. Second Corinthians 5. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. You know what that means? God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. Died for our sins. He took our place. We deserve death. Because sin in the, in the day that thou sinnest, Adam and Eve, thou shalt surely die. But even in God's mercy, he prolonged it. They lived to be almost a thousand years. Wouldn't that be fun to live almost a thousand years? Because you kind of see, you know, I, mean, I like technology. You kind of see, you know, flying cars. Or maybe you could fax yourself somewhere else. That would be kind of cool. But he adds that we might, we might. So it's a condition, all right? We might. Just because Jesus died doesn't mean everybody's saved. Salvation is offered. You have to receive it. You have to believe it. You've got to do something about it. You've got to obey it in Jesus. That we might become the righteousness of God. You know what that word means, righteousness? It means to be made right. It means you've never done anything wrong. It means you are cleared, uh, not just of the charges, but you have made, made been righteous. If you ever commit a crime and you're caught and you go to jail, it's in your record. This one's different. You are guilty, but in God's eyes, it's as if you've never made that mistake. 
you've never committed that sin. When he looks at you and I, he said you are made the right. He sees the blood. You're righteous. You've never done any mistakes. In the name of somebody, worship him right now. Or somebody begin to thank him right now. He knew no sin, but he was made sin for us that we might be made right, cleared of all charges. Hallelujah. When I read that, I can't just help but be thankful for the goodness of God. I've done so many bad things in my early life, uh, but I'm so thankful for the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. He washes white as snow. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It cleanses. It renews in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, when he spoke about Abraham, the Bible says in Hebrews that he staggered not at the promises of God. That's what the word says. Did he stagger? Did he believe he's going to get have a son at 100 years old when he was 90? Didn't Sarah even laugh at the angel of the Lord? He goes, I'm 90 or I'm 80. <laughs> you got to be kidding, right, in, in our day. If you look at the Middle East with all the fightings there because they're the sons of Mishmael, every day we looked at the result of Abraham staggering at the promises of God. But yet in God's eyes, because of this verse, because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in his eyes it's as if not only Abraham never committed any mistakes, you and you and you never ever committed a mistake in your life. In fact, it's available every day. If you confess your sins, He is just. He is faithful to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. See, Jesus is coming soon and we're getting closer and closer to the rapture of the church. It's going to get bad. If something's going to happen in this world because of God's love, He's going to allow some sort of a COVID-like event that's going to arrest the world's attention. To me, that was so amazing to live through that because one day, you know, it was business as usual, and then the next day, there was no car in the freeways. The airports were closed. It's like the zombie apocalypse has happened. How many of you thought that? Maybe some of you are too old to think about that. But <laughs> I mean, you know what the zombie apocalypse is? I usually kid around with the young people. You know, we're doing something. I tell Brother Anthony, yeah, because he's helping me with my generator, you know, because it's clogged up, the carburetor. So he's cleaning it up. And you know, what, what do you need this for, Pastor? Because for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and it's, he's beginning to get to know me. And he's like, he, he, does, he doesn't know to take me seriously or... It's like, man, is, is our pastor nuts? <laughs> but you know, I know I'm kind of digressing here, but I think it was in the 1900s, the Black Plague, right? How many of you remember that? I know you weren't there, but you, you read it in history, right? That was actually more of a, of a zombie apocalypse because there was, there was black, you know, stuff oozing out, and, and neurologically they were affected. They actually went a little crazy. So when they get hit and before they die, they, they're like the song. Oh, you know, like, give me food, rain or something. I don't know. But, but notice this, that the rapture is quickly approaching. And, and some people will say, well, you're going to go through some tribulation. Yeah, but not the tribulation. Amen. You might go through some trial, some tribulation. These are they that came out of great tribulation. But we're not appointed unto wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 7, For those who sleep, sleep at the night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Why? Because there's always God in His creation tells us the contrast between light and darkness. He always makes that a point. Have you ever wondered? 
people drink usually at night? Unless you're an alcoholic, right? It's like, oh, well, there's five o'clock somewhere in the world. <laughs> right? But because there's this contrast of things that are done in the next verse, please. But let us who are of the day. Anybody of the day? Right, day? Anyway, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. <laughs> Amen. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a coincidence. But remember, creation teaches us about the spiritual world that we cannot see, the things that are seen. It teaches us spiritual concepts. Night and day lets you and teaches you and I, your problems yesterday should not be carried to today. Whatever you've gone through yesterday or last week or last month or a few years ago, it should not have a bearing on you today. Just like the sun sets and, and, and then the, ri the sun rises, uh, your problem should be taken care of last night. Amen? That's why as you grow, you don't get angry for too long. Wow. Let me try that again. As you grow, you don't remain angry for too long. And the little things don't anger you. Right? The person that cut you off on the freeway, you don't think about him or her two months after. Right? If you do, my God, let's lay hands on you and pray on you for healing. Because usually you're angry with people that matter. Hello, somebody. You, you don't remain angry at the postman. Right? <laughs> oh, he's sending me the bill. My God will pay it. Don't, don't go in debt. He's just a delivery man. But you, you know who we usually get angry with? The people we have relationships with. People that matter. And is that fair for them? You're married or you're part of a family that's human. They cannot satisfy every need that you have. They can't read your mind. They're, if you're not bringing perfection into the equation of the relationship, I think it's fair not to ex expect perfection. Man, he got quiet. Well, she, she should be doing this. Well, what are you bringing to the table, Bob? Can you even put the lid on the toilet seat? I didn't really understand that for a long time. I'm like, what's wrong with your hand? Put it down. But see, if you're a guy, it is gross to see that. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but one day, if the Lord tarries, you'll get there. Amen. But see, we cannot get angry for too long. Because the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Oh, it feels good to be angry, right? If it, the Bible says that's why he said, Vengeance is mine, uh, saith the Lord, I will recompense. He does not give us the authority nor the leeway to get even because you're overdose on it because it feels good. There's somebody, you know, I, you know, does something to you. It's like, you know, I mean, you have that dreams and, and, and you know, you see yourself as the Incredible Hulk. And, and then they're, they're slapping you around and, and bullying you perhaps and you turn into this... And you strangle them. And you drop kick them like a football. You feel good only for a few seconds. But God does not appoint us unto wrath. Amen. And God's going to save you. And you're going into this other world in Jesus' name. Revelation 19, verse 15. This is a picture of the last week of Daniel, the 70th week of Daniel, known as Jacob's trouble and also as the tribulation. And out of his mouth go with a sharp sword that with it it should smite the nations and he shall rule with them a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. That's not the wrath of the devil. It's the wrath of the Almighty God. It's right there. 
And if we're not appointed unto wrath, that means we'll be exempt from going through it. That means uh, we're going to be out of here before that happens. Now things are going to get bad uh, when it gets closer and closer to that time. Because the man, the Antichrist will be a man of peace. He will bring peace to the Middle East. And there's only a need for peace when there's chaos, when there's war. There'll be a World War III. That's why they number it. I don't have time, but the, the Thessalonians begins to describe, actually the elements melting, describing a nuclear reaction and a nuclear explosion. You know, I'm afraid one day we're going to wake up and, and Russia would, would have bombed Ukraine with a tactical nuclear weapon. Then what's the world going to do? Did you know the world is preparing for war right now? Did you know as North Korea is doing his thing and, and China and all that, that, that but I think about three or four weeks ago, the United States, uh, you know, it tested its ICBM, I think the Minuteman 2. You know why they did that? He's basically saying to North Korea, yours fail all the time, ours work. And did you know we got submarines all over the world at all times uh, that you cannot detect, and they have nuclear deterrent. During an event in Russia, all three of them surfaced at the same time. Do you think that's a coincidence? It's sending a message. Thank God we're still a superpower, praise God. Thank God. Uh, but you know what? The United States is going to dwindle at some level of significance in the economy and in military might. To give rise uh, to the revived Holy Roman Empire in Europe. You know, you know why it's, it's, it, it, the things that are happening to us, uh, they're not a coincidence. If Biden wins again in what, next year, November? That means it's getting closer. I'm not being political. I could care less who wins. I'm not, I, I don't care less who's in the White House. I'm more concerned what's happening in my house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Oh, people come and go. Politics come and go. You know, the politics are like a, like a blood poly is many and ticks are like blood-sucking animals. That's why they call politics. But you know, it's not a coincidence where we're at. You mark this down. When you see the EU dwindle down to close to 10 nations, Right now there's 27. It's the fulfillment of Daniel's revelation and vision of the ten toes and the ten horns that represent ten kings and ten nations. It's not a coincidence that Britain got out of the EU. I believe the Antichrist will be a French Jew because he has to be a Jew to be allowed into the temple. They have nuclear weapons. Amen. But the Bible talks about when God has done everything he has done to save people, yet they won't listen. This is the end result. The, he will tread the winepress. It's, it's a picture of them gathering the grapes during harvest, and they put it on a vat, uh, and they would tread uh, the grapes to produce wine of the fierceness of the wrath of God. You know, it never ceases to so amaze me. Some people say, well, what about these old people that can't repent of their sins, get baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost? What about those people on their deathbed? You mean they're lost? It's like, you think God doesn't love them? You think God loved them or only at their deathbed? You think God has waited all this time to just deal with them when they're at their deathbed? Did God not deal with you all, with us, all of us, uh, when we have strength, uh, when we can comprehend, uh, when we can obey? People that say that you're judging God as one uh, not knowing anything and unloving. You take a snapshot of someone's life really to give a reason not to do anything about your life. How many believe God loves everybody? That the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah wherein few eight people were saved by water. Even so now does baptism save. And notice verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Who is that? 
Who is that? Notice it's all capitalized. It's the deity of God coming down, not as a lamb slain now, but as king of kings. He's not coming now as a savior. He's coming as a judge. He's coming as a ruler. In verse 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. Can you imagine that? Standing on the sun. And he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. You know those crows that bother you? Seems like there's a lot of them, huh? That's not coincidence. Because one day, they're going to eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here's what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, verse 9. But to you who are troubled, rest with us. Praise God. Rest with us when the Lord shall, Jesus, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You can rest in the presence of God. You can rest that one day you're going to go into this unseen world. And you're going to be at the rest forever. Would you stand? Where you or I are heading, it is worth it to go through anything in this life. All of us will have a chance to be offended. Even John the Baptist was offended. And bad things might happen to you. And here's the problem when you're going through stuff, you can't hear clearly. That's why when you're in a storm, don't make life altering decisions. Wait till the storm pass, then make a decision. In Exodus 6 verse 9, the people could not hear Moses. Why? Because for our anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. When you go through that, do you blame God? Do you question His love? Do you say, this is unfair? The truth is, we don't really have control over anything. Even your breath, breathing, is involuntary. Did you know that? Your heart beats involuntary. You have no control over anything. But you know who has control? The Lord Jesus Christ. And He loves you. He's offering hope. He's offering this unseen world that could be your home one day. You know what control does? It brings stress. It brings pressure. Peace and control cannot coexist. Because when you want to control things, it puts a burden on you to make it happen exactly how you controlled it to be. Nobody has control. It's a lie. John 16, said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Might. It's a possibility. How do I have peace, Pastor? Can anybody use some peace? Would you like to dwell in a pressure-free, stress-free life? Well, some of you are thinking that's not possible, but that the Bible says it is. 
It's amazing not to have any stress or pressure. How can you do that? You cast it to the Lord. Yesterday's problems ended last night. Today's a new day. If you got angry last night, don't let it carry over the next day. Psalms 34, verse 13, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Did you know your words either bring peace, activates peace, or activates pressure and stress? Amen? Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace. And pursue it. The word seek there in the Hebrew means to attempt to find, to discover. You can discover peace. And after you discover it, you pursue it. You follow after it. You chase it. You don't revert back to your personality. Well, I've been angry for 40 years. Well, my God changed. Well, I want to control things. My, my, if you want to live in a stress free environment or mindset then you have to give that control now this is not an event this is a process thank God he has changed me still got a way to go how many are thankful you're not the man the woman you used to be God is doing a work in you and he's not done yet come on somebody would you thank him for the change inside of you, even the incremental change, the victories that you have, because sometimes the devil will beat you down and say, you should be further down the road. And you remind him, you know what, I've got hope you don't. I'm going to this unseen world. I'm going to heaven to be with my Lord. He's going to declare me righteous. In the name of Jesus. Because in this unseen world, your words matter. Your words are spiritual. They affect the atmosphere of your life. That's why James, in chapter 3, devoted a whole chapter about tongue. And that's why the essence and the proof that you have received the Spirit of God that changes you, that gives you power, is speaking in tongues. James says, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. And even though that's maybe a warning, but I think that's an encouragement because we should all teach the Word of God. Amen? We should all be teaching the Word of God. For if we all stumble, or King James says, offend in many things, if anyone does not stumble or offend in word or what he or she says, the same is a perfect person or complete, or mature. When you don't say in anger what you want to say, you've matured. When you can hold your tongue, you've matured. When you want to lash out, even if you're right, those of you that are married, how many of you realize even if you're right, if you press it, you've actually lost. Who cares who brings out the trash? Some things just don't matter. Hello? The word bridle there means to control. Because your tongue actually controls your whole body. That's why you could talk your way into a miracle or talk your way out of a miracle. If you say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Or you could say, you know what, I'm just, I'm just dumb. I always make a mistake. There's no hope for me. Why even go through this? You know, I'm just going to give up. What does that do? It just depresses you. It just doesn't give you hope. But God has chosen you. He sees you as a mighty woman and man of God. He has a work for you. He's entrusted you to His Word. Verse 3, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths. 
the abyss. You could turn their whole body. I used to live in a, I used to rent in a house where they had stables and horses. And one day I tried to push a horse, like pushing a wall. But if you put the bit, you could lead it. Because your tongue controls the whole body. Verse 4, look also at ships. And this is amazing because even though we progress in technology, this principle is still the same. The aircraft carriers, as large as they are, they're like a small city. There's like five to 7,000 people in there. It's still controlled by a little rudder in the back. And your tongue, verse 5, is a little member, boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is also set among our members that it defiles the whole body. What you say is so important as we get closer and closer to entering this unseen world. Verse 7, for every kind of beast and bird or reptile creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the, my mankind. It could make killer whales do tricks. But verse 8, but no man except God can tame the tongue. That's why in a moment of surrender, you speak in tongues. You know what that is? It's a sign of God has taken control over the most unruly part of your body which controls your whole being. That's why Paul says, I speak in tongues more than you all. Because in that moment, I'm giving God control. And I could have peace. I could have joy. I could have hope. Lamentations 3, verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. I mean, you can thank God that His mercy is new every morning. I mean, you can thank God that His compassion, His love, His concern for you is new every day. He's not tired of you. He hasn't given up on you. Other people might, but God will not. You see, the unseen world is very real. It is more real than this pulpit right here that you could touch. Because this is temporary. But the things that we cannot see, they're eternal. And so God wants us to make up our mind today, whatever we need to do to make heaven our home, to let go of the temporary dimension and to surrender it to the Lord and say, God, whatever happens, whatever lies ahead, I have made up my mind. I am going to that unseen world. I am making heaven my home. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to rest with you. You have time. Here's another verse to have no stress. Hebrews 4 verse 9, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. How do you want, how do you enjoy rest? When you get home, you could rest, Right? For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now this is talking about us. For he is referring to you and I. If you've entered into your rest that the God offers, the rest in the Holy Ghost, you have ceased from all your labors, everything that you try to do that causes you stress and pressure. You've ceased from it. Because you're no longer in control. So you're at rest. Amen? Verse 11, Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. God offers rest this morning. He offers rest. Lord, your word, O oh God, has been delivered. You're telling all of us that you're coming soon in this unseen world. Though we can't sense it with our five senses, it is as real as it could ever be. Father, 
as we get closer and closer to the catching away of the bride. Lord, that we may live a life that's free of pressure and full of rest. That as we lose control over our hopes, our dreams, and as we surrender that to you, O oh God, that we may make heaven our home in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That today, O oh Lord, is the day of salvation. That now is the acceptable time. As you have dealt with us, O oh God, in this day, that we may not delay what we need to do, O oh Lord, because time is short. And you're coming soon in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to make heaven your home, would you come to the front? We're going to pray together. I'm going to release a blessing over you that God will not only keep you, but use you. That God in his power and his strength and his glory and his plans for your life, that you will have a stress-free, pressure-free life. And that you will have life and that you will have it more abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the word of God. By what's already been released in this room. I release the peace of God. I release the joy of the Lord. If you receive that, would you lift up your voice? Would you begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ? Would you begin to enter into the rest? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, if you've never spoken in tongues, now is your opportunity. If you've never been filled with the Spirit of God, just begin to speak. And at some point, let Him have control over your tongue and begin to speak the words that God gives you from heaven. Begin to speak peace. Begin to speak joy. Begin to claim the promises that God has given unto you. He under the book, I and I am. He under the book, Cotori and I am. Yea, and I'm a son. That's why the Holy Ghost is flowing through you. Would you just let it go through you? control, oh God, I believe all your promises. I believe in heaven where I'm going. I believe in your righteousness, oh God, your world, your life that you've given for me. Go ahead, speak in tongues. I'm going to discuss. 
uncover peace and I'm going to chase after it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, go ahead, keep flowing in the Holy Ghost. Keep flowing in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. My satisfaction doesn't depend on another person. My joy is not dependent on a person. My peace is not dependent on a person. My joy is from the Lord. My source of peace is Jesus Christ. My source of hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is near you, even in your lips, the word of faith, the word of life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yeah, in 